This is the 3 UZ Sports Scoreboard. Rick Hall Lacey has been in the wars in one way and another over the last couple of months. Speaks now with Keith Hillier. Well, Rick, uh, you were probably thinking earlier what else can go wrong. Uh, caramelise, I suppose, uh, some uh, compensation for what has not been a happy day at the races. No, Keith. Just goes to show the vagaries of racing. Half an hour ago, I was mumbling about giving it all away and. Uh, you get a, a win. Rick, uh, were you serious when you were thinking about giving the game away? I've been very upset about the whole thing, Keith. It's uh, extremely upsetting to me, and to be found virtually guilty of something you haven't done is, is not very nice. And uh, anyway, we'll see what happens with the appeal, eh? Yes, perhaps we uh, should not take that subject further. But Caramelise, uh, Rick, has been a most consistent man. Uh, yes, she has. Um, She's been a very good mare, and I told the boy today to uh, ride her closer to the lead um, and try and get a smother, and if she pulled her way to the front, it was just bad luck, because I don't think you can win from coming from last at Sandown anymore. I don't really know why, but I just don't think that you can. The feature event, of course, is race number three on the program, the A.V. Hiskin Steeple, and the cloud was lifted this morning from the Rickwood AC Stable when Dewadi schooled well over three hurdles at Bendigo. Well, AC declared him a certain starter in the race. However, the horse will be inspected again in the morning and then once more by VRC veterinary steward John Burke at the course. Rickard Acey is certain the horse will be able to take his place at post time. I'm sure he's quite all right. Uh, I even had one of the part owners down there this morning. But uh, there's a bit of pressure on. There's been a lot of publicity about the horse. And uh, if something did happen tomorrow, I wouldn't want it to react on me, obviously. So I'm making sure that everyone else has a good uh, uh, feel of his leg and everything else to uh, so that if anything did happen it wouldn't come back on me yeah that's right what exactly was the extent of the injury because it did look bad last saturday didn't it mm. well he's uh, just put it straight through the takeoff board um luckily he's obviously pulled it out at the right angle otherwise uh, angle otherwise he would have broken his uh, his fetlock joint um he was just a bit sore for a couple of days and um, we've been treating him with the magnetopulse machine and uh, he's shown remarkable improvement over the last couple of days. In fact, now he's not at all sore on it. Great. What about his fitness? Has he missed uh, work during the week? Yes, he didn't work on Monday. He wouldn't have worked Sunday anyway after his race on Saturday. Uh, he just trotted around Tuesday, trotted canted Wednesday, worked normally Thursday and of course galloped this morning. I don't think it makes a scrap of difference. Uh, I don't think he'll be beaten on the score of fitness, on a score of fitness. Uh, he, uh, if he is beaten, it'll be the tight track and the fact that, um, well, those fences at the valley, a lot of horses don't handle them quite as well as... Uh, if the race was at Flemington, he'd be a much better betting proposition. Trainer record AC. Of course, the other big highlight of the race tomorrow will be Airmond. The 10-year-old New Zealander will retire after the running of the race. He won it last year and has the chance to join Crisp as the only dual Hiskins winners. Another grand old gent will retire after tomorrow's meeting. Bert Honeychurch will saddle up his last city runner awarded in race six and has an excellent chance to go out on a winning note. My selections for the program and the first have gone two Norfolk Tiger to beat one Fairway Miss. Race two, number two Mansmar to beat one Sleeping Giant. In the third, three Leah Montlatter like to beat Lord Shiner number four. I've left a Wally out of the top two. Race four in the program, one blue vein from four kale. In the fifth, six gold for your to beat two whiskey lover. Race seven, one viva perak from six awarded. In the seventh, one conchelle and three arietas gold. And the best bet if you can wait till the last, he should win. Number one, Charvel to beat three, Cindy Harbour. That's the racing report for today. And now back to Peter. Greg Miles. And uh, one of the big questions about the uh, Hiskin steeple is the fitness of Diwali, who of course uh, pulled up in the race at Sandown last week. And uh, yesterday, I spoke to Rick Hall Lacey. Rick, of course, will be fairly busy this morning, and we recorded this interview yesterday after Diwali had worked at Bendigo. And uh, I asked Rick how the horse had pulled up after his work on Friday morning. Uh, very well, Peter. We're extremely pleased with him. How far did he work over at Bendigo? Uh, about 1,400 evens. Um, and then he jumped the three fences at the back of the course. Earlier in the week, Rick, were you confident of getting him to the post for the Hiskin steeplechase? Uh, no, not at all. He was um, 
quite sore over the weekend and again on Monday we didn't work him then. We trotted him on Tuesday, trotted, canted, Wednesday, worked him normally. That's uh, a round of uh, trotting and two rounds of pace work, about two and a half miles on Thursday and of course he's, um, he's had a good strong workout today. Right, well, that's terrific news. I'm sure that the uh, the racing public of Victoria are very happy to hear about that because he's a magnificent draw card after that great win in the uh, Grand National Steeplechase. A lot of people were hoping that he would get to the post today, and now that he's going to be there, we do wish you the best of luck. Uh, well, thanks, Peter. He certainly won't be beaten on the score of fitness. Uh, the small turning track, of course, doesn't suit him as well as Flemington, but uh, I'm sure he'll give his back as a good side. Thanks very much, Rick Hallacy. Thank you. That was Rick Orlacy uh, recorded yesterday and uh, he's going to be one of the great draw cards. Diwali providing everything is OK and he does go around today, Shelley. Well, I had one of those uh, female intuitions that he couldn't win last week and left him out and I feel the same again today. I don't like horses that haven't won round this circuit. Hmm. Now, maybe he hasn't raced round here many times. I was away for a good part of the winter and don't know. But I do think Learmont Vlad, who handles the jumps here well, can beat Airmont three from one. Peter? Well, in a little way, I agree <coughs> with Shelley. Learmont Vlad, uh, I've selected because you know he's fit. Diwali, uh, what, tore half a, um, a panel of log out. Yeah, he broke one of the logs. Yeah. He hit it so hard. You saw the uh, picture in the newspaper. Hmm. So, uh, no, I, I can't fancy him. Although Rick knows what he's doing. But uh, I know to uh, go along with Liam, my dad, who's trained downtown Epsom. <laughs> we, we have a little, uh, little function going there every week. Right. <laughs> We're uh, in the op shop. Yes, the op shop. <laughs> Warren Road, 75, if you want to uh, call in. And by the way, talking... Uh, yeah. Take yeah. bank card? Did you take bank card on? No, cash only. No, cash only. Jack Jury. Yes. Uh, he's progressing quite terrifically well, with his good. Uh, heart problem. Well, that's and good. Uh, also, Ralph's in hospital now. Oh, heck. Yeah. So, uh, uh, to both of them, uh, our I'll best send, wishes. Yeah. Peter, Peter, Learmont Vlad to beat uh, number one, Airmont. Right? I think Learmont Vlad is only a good thing, Pete. Mm -hmm. The only danger, Airmont. Learmont Vlad, Diwali, as Rick says, if he gets there, a great chance. And Airmont, I expect him to run well too. But Learmont Vlad. Well, I'm the early dissenter. I'm going for Lord Shiner. Um, I thought his run when he beat Learmont Vlad and Diwali, he beat them on their merits yeah. on a heavy track here. And uh, the form has been proven well, and I think Cass Smith can win both the jumping races today. Well, in that case, she wins the uh, trainer's premiership. It's going to be very, very interesting yes. to see what happens. But I thought Lord Shine up four to beat one Airmond and two Diwali. Race that looks as though it's going to be a real filler, Keith. Will build the equine equivalent of a miracle. Is Diwali likely to take his place in the Hiskin steeple today? What, what chance would you have given that, looking at poor Diwali, uh, not able to put his off hind leg to the ground when he crashed through that log at Sandown last Saturday. Yes, it, uh, I thought he was gone. I thought something was broken because when he pulled him up before the second of the double, he was standing there with his uh, off hind leg holding it up in the air. And I thought, oh, the, the poor devil, he's gone. But uh, hopefully, although I know he cut it, but hopefully the reason that uh, he was holding it was there, that he may have struck a nerve. And uh, it, that being the case, of course, it, it, uh, it could be all right. Oh, he was very bruised, and uh, like bookmakers, Bill, I don't believe in miracles, and I think that Diwali will go for a bath in the betting today. I can't see him winning. Trouble with you is you were born 2,000 years too late. <laughs> <coughs> I, in fact, I have left Diwali out of the placings. Diwali, incidentally, will be inspected by uh, Dr John Burke, the uh, veterinary steward, on his arrival at the course. I think uh, Lord Shiner can win and give Cat Smith the, uh, enough points to win the leading jumping trainer's premiership for the season. She is one win behind, but she has more second placings than uh, Bruce Purcell and Rick Horlacey. So a win would uh, give Cat uh, the premiership. Of course, if Diwali won, it would give uh, Rick Horlacey a clear-cut win. But Lord Shiner likes the wet uh, six wins over jumps, and I think that he can beat Airmon who uh, won this race last year. He's a grand old uh, campaigner. He'll be 11 on Monday. And Liam on Slab, um, Eddie Lang, the trainer, is delighted with this rain because Liam on Slab's eight wins, and they include, I think, a couple on the flat, have all been on rain-affected tracks. They're my three. And incidentally, talking about rain, Bill, there is, uh, at this moment, I think, a, uh, an inspection of the track in Adelaide, 
there's still raining there and the boys from the Adelaide Advertiser told me last night that if there was overnight rain uh, the meeting could not go on so that meeting uh, uh, must be in doubt and we'll have that news of course as soon as it comes through from Adelaide. And that's Adelaide we're talking about, not Mooney Valley. Everything's going on there. Shane? Yes, and what a pity that the, there is a cloud over uh, all of these top chances in the Hiskins. Otherwise it had the makings of a magnificent race, didn't it? No, they're still there, Shane. They're still yeah, there. but Airmon knocked a joint last week and had a temporary setback. We saw the Wally. Learmont's lad's been under constant treatment since his last win. And therefore I'm going for Lord Shine. I like you, Keith, because at least he ran last Saturday and pulled up well. And uh, back at Mooney, on Mooney Valley on June 25, I'm going for Diwali. I, um, I still believe that he's probably struck his stifle and you can get away with that. And that's, he wouldn't be racing unless he was at a pit because I think uh, well, Lacey likes the horse too much to uh, put him in jeopardy. And uh, you can hit your stifle, you can pull him back in, they pop out sometimes with horses. I uh, reckon he will win it. He's fit, he'll win it and he wouldn't be running unless he was fit, so he'll win it. Lord, I like Lord Shiner for second and Liam on lad for third, but uh, I'll be back in Diwali today. It's a wonderful race, the Hiskin steeplechase. It is every year, and I'm staying with Airmon. He won it brilliantly last year. He showed what good form he's in with that great win in the Dudegala hurdle race. Uh, probably with a bit of age, he just found the national distance a little too far for him now, but I think he'll shine there today at Mooney Valley, and I think he can win. I put Learmont Lad in for second. He proved the master of Diwali in the Ian McDonald steeplechase here at Mooney Valley. And I put Lord Shiner in for third. Now, Diwali, I uh, have left it out, not because of the injury, because I know it won't start unless it's 100% fit, but uh, for the reason that at Mooney Valley, Learmont Lad did prove his master, as did Lord Shiner, and I think at Mooney Valley they will do again. Now let's go out to Mooney Valley and the man on the spot, the chief executive there, Ian McEwen. Good morning, Ian. But the top four are all great chasers in their own right. Airmond, of course, the winner of this race last year in track record time, and he's having only his second appearance over the big fences today. Diwali, the Grand National steeplechase winner by a mammoth margin, and that unfortunate mishap that put a cloud over him from Sandown last Saturday. He's apparently recovered from that. Rick Lacey is sending him to the post with the opinion that he's 100% fit. And Rick told me yesterday that if the horse is beaten, it won't be on the score of fitness. Learmont's lad, after falling over in the Grand National when it tried to take off too far back from a jump, came here to Mooney Valley and won the Hunt Club steeplechase in very easy fashion. And Lord Shiner, of course, won the Ian McDonald steeplechase at his last appearance here over the jumps and beat on that occasion Learmont Lad and Diwali. So, all in all, it's a tremendous race. And I just thought possibly Lord Shiner might have been sharpened up by that run on the flat at Sandown last week. And I've selected him for Lord Shiner, lead number one, Airmond, and two, Diwali. In race number three, feature event, the AV Hiskin steeplechase, very important scratching, number two, Diwali, withdrawn at eight past twelve. Race three, number two, Diwali, a late scratching, eight past twelve at Mooney Valley. So two scratchings from the third, uh, two and eight, with Diwali being the very important late scratching at eight past twelve from the AV Hiskin steeples. And uh, peeping Pete, well of course the first sensation has already occurred here at Mooney Valley before racing even started. The continuing saga of the Rick Hall Lacey camp. Mm. Well, it's hard luck, Pete, isn't it, from, uh, I think, all lovers of uh, jumping races. Uh, sad to see Diwali pulled out, but, of course, naturally, the stewards or the veterinary surgeon was acting only in the interest of the horse and connections and everybody else and punters throughout Australia, for that matter. But, uh, yes, well, Rick Corlacey cannot take a trick. No, he can't, but, uh, well, he's got caramelising later, which is uh, possibly some compensation. It, it may be able to win for it. Well, according to the information from my man in... Uh, over the border, he says Carol eyes cannot win. Really? It's one of his lays of the day. Yeah. So well, we're all concerned that if he's not 100% fit that he's not going round, but it has robbed the race of uh, quite a bit of interest. But I think that was pretty much on the cards after what happened to him at Sandown last Saturday. Now Caramelise comes out of race 7, the official scratching time 3.03, reason for the withdrawal, veterinary advice. The stewards acting on veterinary advice have scratched in race 7, number 2 Caramelise, a late scratching at Mooney Valley.